Let us pray. Holy God, in the quietness of these moments, silence in us any voice but your own. Open these words to us this day by the power of your Holy Spirit. Amen. So the new title of this sermon <laughs> is, is An All-Inclusive God. Uh, the sermon text this morning, um, given that, that we heard the news of Tim Ahrens' uh, COVID diagnosis about a, 10 o'clock on Friday morning, um, uh, it's been an interesting weekend. Um, I will say, so the sermon title is based on Acts 10, so not the scripture passage that we've just read about the Gerasenes and the demoniac, and I encourage you to read that again. Uh, today's text is going to focus on Acts chapter 10, which is also very interesting that we'll engage in today. And I give um, lots of credit to a, a, a colleague named Reverend Trip Porch, who um, we worked on this sermon together. It was his sermon, and he gave me um, good free use of the corpus of this sermon for us today. Um, so I appreciate uh, Reverend Tripp Porch. So a lot happens. A lot happens in the book of Acts, chapter 10, which I commend to you. It marks a turning point for the people of God. Prior to this, they had thought that God was doing something new for a particular people, a particular people of a particular nationality, for a specific region, a specific religion, a specific race. It had been an insider-outsider kind of thing, and the dividing lines were very clear. On one side were God's people, the Jewish people through the generations, and on the other side was the rest of the world, the Gentiles. But then Jesus came along and began to push those boundaries, healing some of the outsiders, lifting them up as heroes in his stories. Jesus was calling all their deeply held beliefs into question. And then after Jesus died, God continued to reveal to these early Christians that the bounds they had been placed on God's love, inclusion, and redemption were far too limited. Slowly, they began to realize that the scope of God's love was way more expansive and universal than they had previously thought. Toward the beginning of this book of Scripture, in the book of Acts, the tone is set. Many of us, two weeks ago, read the story of Pentecost, about the church receiving the Holy Spirit and being called to learn new languages and to be sent into the world. To be called by God outward to the rest of the world in order to share the good news that they are included in God's expansive love. And then a few chapters after the Pentecost story, in the same book of Acts, it happens again. One of the apostles, Philip, meets an Ethiopian eunuch, someone who is completely other, completely outsider, a person of a different nationality, a different skin color, a different economic class, a person of a different gender identity. And yet, Philip is called by the Holy Spirit to sit with that person, to help them read and understand scripture. And then when they ask to be baptized, Philip, following the call of the Spirit, gladly agrees, welcoming them fully into the body of Christ. This theme continues on again and again in the book of Acts. God's love is far more expansive than ours. It is far more inclusive than ours. It is far more affirming than ours. Peter is also one of Jesus' closest disciples. The rock on whom the church would be built has this vision that sheets descend from heaven full of animals that tradition has called off limits, something you would want to avoid at all costs, ritualistically unclean, and God's voice says, kill and eat. 
But Peter says, absolutely not. All of that is unclean. I have never broken kosher law. I'm not going to now. Then God's voice says, don't call something unclean if God has made it pure. That happens three times in this text. Now, the vision is symbolism, of course. Peter is realizing just how profoundly open God's boundaries are that God includes, loves, celebrates all humanity, that calls them to minister to communities they had long considered and incorrectly considered outsider or other. And as soon as he has this vision and comes to this realization, Peter is given this really wonderful opportunity to put his new learning into practice. He is invited to go to the home of a Roman soldier named Cornelius. Well, Cornelius is someone who would have been completely other to an outsider to someone like Peter. In fact, Peter names that out loud. You all realize it's explicitly forbidden for me, he says, a Jew, to associate with and visit outsiders. But God has shown me how wrong this is. So I am here to share God's love with you and welcome you fully into the family of God." Unquote. I recently came across a tweet from Pastor Carlos Rodriguez, something I had heard before, but it came back to me once again. He says this, as soon as you draw a line to exclude people, Jesus goes to the other side of that line with them and invites you to join him there every time." Unquote. I love that because it's so true. I don't have to tell you humanity has been too good for too long at drawing lines, about forming boundaries, about building walls and barriers and categories and making laws that put people in boxes, or uh, structuring our world to be us and them. But God's love is far more expansive and inclusive and affirming than ours has ever been. And whatever lines we draw, God is always on the other side of that line. But what this Acts passage in chapter 10 tells us is that God is called the church in particular. God has called us the church. God has called us to be that earthly expression of heavenly love, to be the community that best represents God's expansive, inclusive, and affirming love on this earth. So what is God asking us to do? God is asking us to cross over that boundary line, to cross over the border line that our world draws, the lines that exclude people, and be the exception to the rule, to be a community rooted in God's radical love because it is boundless and expansive and inclusive and affirming love that transforms each of us first and then the world. But I don't have to tell you this, because I know we are all here because we have experienced a glimpse of that love. And if you have been in a place where you have felt as outsider or have been told by some religious authority that you are outsider or other, or maybe you're viewing, joining us via live stream and have been in a place where that is, let me affirm that this place is not that, that this place openly and, and affirms what God has in store for all of us and for you. Because we have all felt what it means to be part of a community that loves you as you are, that welcomes you as you are and celebrates you as you are, we can be better. The church, as it, at its very best, doesn't put up dividing lines. 
because Jesus is going to walk right across that line and will invite us to join him where he is. In the midst of everything that is going on in the year 2022 and this weekend in Columbus, Ohio, we celebrate pride and pride month and embrace all of God's diversity because it's important, because it matters to God for the health and well-being of God's people and the church. But unfortunately, there is language from legislators six blocks to the west that are limiting our trans children's full inclusion into life's activities in school, in sports, in a variety of ways from a very young age. Today, there are still young children and young adults who believe that they are better off hiding who they are or better off dead than being who they are in God's sight. And when they hear that on the news or from religious leaders where they are or elected officials, what are our young people to think and believe? That we at the church can remind them, need to remind them, that they are loved by God completely, and that we, the church, will accept them and welcome them for who they are, for who God is creating them to be. When someone draws the line, remember, what does Jesus do? But walks right over to he walks right over and invites us to join him there. In our courageous steps, we can join him. So today, I want you to think of a time in which you have been welcomed into a community. Think of a time in which you remember what it's like to be welcomed and affirmed and loved. I want you to try and remember what it felt like to have that unique experience. Maybe it was at church. Maybe it was in a, in a sports team. Maybe it was in a book club. Maybe it was at work. Take a moment and reflect on a story in which you felt welcomed and included. And then your challenge today is to go and share that with someone else. Before you leave this space, maybe on your way to the car, maybe with a neighbor as you're mowing your yard later today, share that story with someone, somewhere, somehow, so that they may understand the impact of your ability to receive welcome and that you can also then extend welcome to someone else. Because the church, at its best, reflects this radical love. We all have to tell that story, too. The church, at its best, reflects this radical love for all, as we follow an all-inclusive God. May it be so.